Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Lollipop, and this is the new 2023 Trek Fuel X5. Now you guys have been asking for a review video on this bike for forever but they are just so popular and sold out everywhere that I was not able to ride one. However I was able to find one at the shop today luckily and Case in point, this one has actually already been sold, so I gotta make this video quick before my manager notices that it's gone. Regardless, in this video, I'm gonna take you on a tour of this bike, show you all of the nice features on it. I will also weigh it and give you that weight value in a size large, which is this bike. And uh, at the end of the video, I am going to be test riding it and comparing it to other Trek bikes that I've ridden and reviewed, um, such as other Fuel X bikes and the Roscoe bikes and stuff like that. So definitely stick around. And before we get any further, if you do like this video and like content like this, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking on the bell icon to get notified every time I upload. And for a quick background, the Fuel X bikes are Trek's essentially all mountain trail bikes. So they can be used from anything from cross country to trail to enduro. You can even use the commute to work for all I care, but it's essentially one bike to do it all. And this bike is so popular in specific because the Fuel X5 is actually the least expensive full suspension mountain bike that Trek makes. So if you are looking into getting a full suspension bike, this will be the cheapest way to get one. And I will quickly mention here that Trek just released a brand new fully redesigned Fuel X lineup for 2023. And I will cover that later, but for now, this one is the Gen 5 version which uses the same frame as last year and the year before that so just keep that in mind and let's get right into the features so starting off with the price this bike currently retails for 2700 us dollars which is a big number that's crazy to say considering that this bike basically in the same format it is right now almost cost around 2100 a year and a half ago or so so there's some inflation for you, but for that money, you do get a pretty nice frame here. So let's check that out. This one is specifically in a size large, like I mentioned, and it is in the color matte Neister black is what Trek is calling it. So it's kind of like this dark gray, almost gunmetal type of color has, um, you know, it is matte has, it seems like it almost has a bit of a metallic flake on it. Uh, so it looks pretty nice. And this bike does use Trek's alpha platinum aluminum you can kind of see it there and that just means that it is their highest end aluminum that they offer so it's their lightest in weight it's also their strongest and it has the smoothest welds i mean right there doesn't look that smooth in my opinion but <laughs> it apparently is their smoothest welded uh, aluminum so it's a pretty nice frame overall it's going to be very strong and perfect for a trail mountain bike like this one is uh, this bike also does of course have a tapered head tube right there for stronger suspension forks and a stronger front end for those big hits on the trail it also has boost spacing which is pretty much the standard for uh serious mountain bikes these days so got these Bontrager hubs right there with boost spacing so it's extra wide and, and gives you a nice amount of confidence and strength on the trail and of course is internally routed with Trex Control Freak uh, internal routing system which keeps the cable rattle noise down and still protects all the cables by having them go right into the frame right there and then you can see they kind of have a very specific routing system so they come out and go <laughs> kind of underneath the shock zip tied down there to keep all that chain rattle noise down coming back through here through the chain stay and finally back up through the derailleur or uh, right there on the other side for the rear brake so it looks very nice and definitely protects the cables now this bike does have ICG 5 mounts for a chain guide like kind of mount it right there or another screw you can kind of see back there for mounting chain guides bash guards uh, if you're riding harder and want to protect your chain ring and your chain from falling off the bike and stuff like that so that's really nice to have as an option check on all of their trail bikes that are full suspension also now are implementing this minnow link system that allows you to change the geometry by around a half a degree to make it slacker or steeper uh, all the bikes come in the slack setting because they are trail mountain bikes and not cross-country bikes but you could make it more cross-country and efficient for the trail by flipping that ship there and while we're here talking about the frame i did weigh it just now in this size large and on Trek's official website, the size medium weighs 34.62 pounds, so definitely a very heavy bike. But I tested it myself, and you can see that weight value on the screen right now. It is 34.2 pounds in a size large, so fairly accurate to Trek's average amount. You'll probably find some that are a little higher, a little lower here and there. But yeah, overall, very nice looking frame design. You can see the beautiful brushed uh, silver Fuel X5 logo on the top there, as well as the same thing right here on the Trek logo. Got a little bit of an alarm in the background, sorry about that. Trek also does generously include some rubberized protectors, one for the fork hitting the frame right here, in case that ever happens, so you're protected on the frame, and your fork, and then another rubberized one right here. It even has the little Trek logo on it, which is pretty cool. And of course, we have one on the chainstay here too. This is just to prevent chain noise and protect the, the chainstay from 
the chain like hitting it and scratching up paint and stuff and there's a little one down here as well so Shrek has put in some thought into this frame and I like that for sure. All right, but now let's talk about that suspension on this bike. It's going to be fairly entry level for this uh, lowest end Felix model, but we have the RockShox Recon Silver. You can see the Recon logo right there. And this fork is uh, an air spring fork, so you will have a spot to put in some air on this side, and you can kind of just, you know, unscrew this cap, and then eventually you'll find a valve that you can stick air in and that will allow you to adjust the fork for your specific weight which is great to see it also has a lockout on this side with some clicks if you can hear that and that just like adds more compression to the fork so fully open would be you're using all the travel as you close it out when you push down on the bike uh, on the fork it will not move and that's really helpful for if you're riding on the road or on flat areas it's more efficient so you don't lose any pedaling power to the suspension fork and the rear shock also has that same feature uh, right there, but we'll get to that later. You can close it or open it. But other things on this fork, it looks like it has 32 millimeter wide stanchions, which is good enough. Definitely could use some wider stanchions for added strength and upgrade this fork up. Uh, it does have 140 millimeters of travel. I believe this is actually the same fork that I have on my 2023 Trek Roscoe 7 now that I'm looking at it, which is pretty funny because uh, it looks very similar. And my Trek Roscoe 7 actually is almost the same color as this as well. So. Getting a little bit of deja vu looking at this bike. Actually, I think it has the same drivetrain as well. But I'm realizing a lot of stuff right now. <laughs> Maybe even the same dropper post. Wow, this is a very similar bike to my Roscoe 7. It's basically a uh, full suspension version of that one. So that makes me a little bit more excited to ride it out on the road and see how it feels on the test ride. But yeah, anyways, getting sidetracked, that is the front suspension fork. Now let's move on to the rear shock. Uh, it's from the brand X-Fusion and it is a X-Fusion Pro 2 shock with a two position damper. As I mentioned before, you can lock it out fully or have it uh, fully open. And this does have 130 millimeters of suspension travel. So 140 up front and 130 in the rear for a nice all mountain trail. Uh, bike it's kind of in the middle between cross country and enduro so they have been specking the shock on all the Fuli x5 models uh, all the other Fuli x bikes don't have x fusion they all have rock shocks or fox or something but i'm sure it's not too bad I'll, I'll ride it on the road and let you know what i think about it as well all right but now let's talk about these wheels on the bike <laughs> so first of all we do have the alex md35 rims you can kind of see that right there md35 so these are aluminum rims with a 35 millimeter width and they are tubeless compatible. So you are able to make this bike uh, a tubeless setup with these wheels specifically. Uh, however, the tires are not tubeless compatible. These are the Bontrager XR4 comp tires. Um, they are not the team issue ones. The team issue ones are the only ones that are tubeless uh, ready and can be converted to a tubeless setup. Uh, so you would need to get new tires on this bike if you wanted to make it a tubeless setup But these are 2.6 inches wide and 29 inches in diameter, but you can see a really good width I really like the 2.6 figure for trail bikes. I think that's very nice and stable and aggressive uh, The tread on these tires is really good as well. The XR4 tires are Pretty good in, in my opinion from Braun Traeger and my co-workers agree on that as well And you can see right there that it's 20 nine by 2.6 in the front and in the rear but now let's move on to the drivetrain i'm actually going to start off with the shifter <laughs> up here so this one is a shimano dior m6100 shifter which is pretty cool actually i have this one on my roscoe as well so you can use your finger to shift down or use your thumb to shift down and then you have to use your thumb to shift back up but you can go up to three clicks at once to shift up in the cassette. So a really nice shifter, uh, definitely a good quality one, and I have no complaints about that one for sure. And then the drivetrain overall is the Shimano Dior M6100 1x12 drivetrain. Uh, on Shrek's website, it does say that it comes with the Shimano MT511 uh, Dior crankset. Uh, however, Trek has been swapping that out for the Praxis Cadet crankset in some cases. So this one is actually the same crankset I have. Uh, I mean, this is the same drivetrain I have on my Roscoe 7. I should stop talking about the Roscoe 7 and focus on this bike, but yeah, this is the Praxis Cadet crank set up here with the 30 tooth chain ring. So same specs as the Shimano one that originally comes on this bike. Uh, so not gonna be too much of a difference there. Then we have the Shimano Dior chain moving to the Shimano Dior 10 to 51 tooth cassette, which is definitely a very wide range, almost the widest range that you can get right now from a mountain bike one by 12 drivetrain. So that's really nice to see, of course, very good. Uh, cassette from Shimano there with the micro spline free hub and all that stuff and then of course the Shimano Dior M6100 uh, rear derailleur here which is very good quality as well overall this drivetrain is 
you know, not the highest end drivetrain, but it definitely works really well for the price point it hits. So I'm very happy with this one and I have no complaints on it. Uh, also has that clutch right here to add tension on the chain. So you have less chain noise and less chance of the, the chain falling off the bike and causing issues and stuff like that. So overall, very good drivetrain on that one. I actually like this one a lot. And for the brakes, we have the Shimano MT200 brakes. Of course, uh, these are basically on most of Trex mountain bikes around this price point or lower. It's a $2,700 bike and these brakes are found on bikes that are around $800 or so. And that is just kind of upsetting. So that, I would definitely say that's the thing that holds this bike back. These brakes work fine, but if you're riding the way that this bike is meant to be ridden, I think you're gonna need something a little bit stronger with some more bite and uh, maybe some more pistons as well. You can see, move around to this side here. <laughs> you can see the actual brake caliper right here. So it's a two piston brake caliper, which is typically used for like cross country bikes and stuff like that. So nothing too special. You guys have seen this all the time if you're uh, watching my channel like, regularly. And uh, yeah, that's what they look like for about the hundredth time. <laughs> All right, so now let's talk about some of the finishing components on this bike. So right here we have the Trans X JD dropper post connected to a Bontrager Arvada saddle. This saddle is pretty much the one that Trek uses on all of their mountain bikes and uh, it's not really that comfortable, so you might have to switch that one out pretty soon. But this dropper post has 130 millimeters of travel in all frame size above like extra small and small, I believe. So. Uh, not a lot of travel. I think people tend to prefer like 150 or more when they start getting into the large, extra large uh, sizes. Uh, I'm personally fine with that since I'm only like 5'7", five, 5'8 five, in height. But then up here we have the Bontrager Rhythm Comp stem, which is just an alloy stem that is 50 millimeters long. Uh, no uh, degree rise on that one, but we do have an alloy handlebar from Bontrager as well that is 750 millimeters wide. So a good enough width for this bike. Uh, I think I have 780 on my Roscoe actually, so surprising that this one's a little shorter than that, even on a size large. So overall, in my opinion, this is a very good looking bike and I like it a lot. I would consider buying one. For this price point, we'll, we'll see. Let's go out and give it a test ride right now and then I'll give you my thoughts on if the bike is worth it or not, since I do want to ride it before uh, giving you my final thoughts on it. All right, stick this dropper down so I can actually ride this large bike. Oh, one thing I should have mentioned was that <laughs> These pedals do not come on the bike. These are just ones I stuck on there so I could actually ride it. So the bike itself does not come with any pedals. I'm gonna move the dropper up a little bit. And this one is not in my uh, specific frame size here. I usually ride a size medium for my height, uh, but I'm not really seeing a lot of these bikes. I've probably seen two in the past year and a half. So uh, I'm taking whatever chance I can get and riding this one. Um, so far though, like initial impression, this bike feels fast, <laughs> which is very strange to say considering it's like 34 pounds and it's not really designed to be a bike that's very fast. You know, it's not a cross country bike. It is definitely reminding me of my Roscoe though, for sure. Let's have some fun with this thing. The bike does have 180 millimeter wide rotors, uh, brake rotors. I forgot to mention that part. So that, that definitely helps. So, whew. <laughs> yeah, it is stopping the bike. It's not too bad, but I know on the trail that some people do complain about these brakes not being the best. So I think most people would prefer something a little better. Whew. Yeah, it still feels pretty fast. The drive chain is of course perfect. Love everything about this drivetrain. It's smooth, it's just fast enough. I don't think you really need anything higher end than this one. Yeah, and, and I know I'm only riding this bike on the road, so I can't really say 100% for sure uh, how this bike actually is and how it rides on the trail and stuff like that. But I've ridden enough bikes on the road to kind of get a good idea of the differences. Now let's compare this bike to some other bikes that I know about. So. This is the lowest level aluminum Fuli X that Trek offers. There's also the Fuli X7, which is around $3,500 currently. And then the Fuli X8, which is the highest end one that's almost $4,000 now. I would rather get this bike than the Fuli X7 for sure, because the Fuli X7 has the SRAM Annex Eagle drivetrain. Um, and that's a good drivetrain, but it's essentially on par with the one that's on this bike. This one is just the Shimano counterpart. And I actually like the Shimano one better personally. I just think it is smoother, works better. It's also a newer drivetrain since they recently released it compared to the NX that has been out for a while. 
So that's that's one point for the Fuel EX5 already, and it's already way cheaper. I mean, you're paying about $800 more for that new bike, and you're already getting a, a worse drivetrain, in my opinion, or at least the same drivetrain. The Fuel EX7 is uh, fully tubeless and does have better suspension and stuff like that, but it's not so much better that I'd be willing to pay the extra money for it. If I was thinking about getting a Fuel EX7, I'd probably just uh, try to stretch my budget or save some more money and get the Fuel EX8. The Fuel EX8 is definitely a bike that you can just get on and ride and not have to worry about upgrading anything for a while. Whereas this one, you're probably gonna wanna, as your <coughs> skills grow, you're probably gonna wanna upgrade some stuff. Same with the Fuel EX7. So that's my thoughts. If I had to get one Fuel EX, honestly with prices these days, it'd probably be this one and I would just upgrade some parts that I'd want to. I also do wanna kinda compare it to the Roscoe's because I mean, those aren't full suspension bikes but they're very similar now because the new Roscoe's are essentially just hardtail versions of these Fuel EX bikes. And those are cool because the one I have, the Roscoe 7, that bike is about $1,800. So you save almost $1,000 going with that one, just taking out the rear shock. That's pretty much the only thing you're doing. And the Roscoe 7 itself is fully, fully tubeless ready from the store. So it's also, that's much better for sure. But obviously a full suspension mountain bike is more capable than a, uh, than a hardtail in most cases so that might not be everyone's cup of tea but if you're not too worried about it and still want a high-end mountain bike getting a, a hardtail roscoe to save you a thousand bucks you could even go with the roscoe 8 which has a lot of great parts on it um and part pretty much does not need a lot of upgrading at all and that bike uh is still like 200 dollars less than this one so you could get a lot of good value and the the rear shock does not feel bad actually obviously like on a trail it might feel worse but it's not actually like a low quality shock or anything. Overall, I think this is a great bike. Would I pay 2,700 for it? Probably not. Um, I would definitely try to get a deal on this one, get one used or something like that. But yeah, those are my thoughts. Sorry if this video kind of dragged on for a long time. I kind of got carried away talking about bikes here since I love doing that. But yeah, that's pretty much it for my test ride on the Fuel X5. But that is it for this video, everyone. As always, remember to leave any questions or comments that you have down below and I'll try to get to them all. But other than that, I appreciate all of you watching this morning and I hope all of you have a great day and remember to keep biking.